existing housing stock. It's not about significantly boosting the supply of housing. And this is whether whether we will um, like it or not. This is what the government is, is aims are, and this is what we need to um, respond to. So, in the absence of a strategic housing market assessment, we need to go on the the evidence of the RSS as many inspectors in the region and across the country have to bid and impact. don't recall any decisions being made using um, the ONS household projections. And they're just not credible. They're not a credible demographic um, projection. We've got evidence from Bob Wilmore, you know, you know the yeah. more yeah. demographic specialists who, who came out to say the same thing. I mean, these arguments are being run across the region um, successfully. So I can testament to the HMRI as well in terms of the applications which actually accompanied that HMRI because I, I was actually a case officer for a number of those applications um, at the time I actually worked for the council so it was very much a, replen a replenishment of existing stock which was vacant at the time so those dwellings have subsequently been cleared but the consents which were granted supplemented the numbers lost So I know the um, council has raised some decisions. Um, I've got to uh, the Gallagher um, yeah. estate decision um, about a radical shift in policy as um, means to back up their claim to use um, the ONS figure. Well, that that claim was made as a, um, to relate to plan making rather than decision taking. Now, the council are right completely to use the ONS figure at their starting point for NLP to work in, in coming up with their new figure. But at this present moment in time, they cannot use it to claim that they've got an excess of the five years of life. And that radical shift in policy change which the um, judge referred to was based, based on the difference between um, a period of restraint in the RSS from the previous government and now a period of significant um, housing boost, which is one of the main mechanisms this government sees in, in to recover the economy. So are you you're telling me that the, the figures in the the figures in the previous RSS were based on a um, were, were holding down the numbers. Yeah. We have got a lot of restraint in in action. Authority at that time, which was subsequently lifted in 2011. And that policy, as I recall, that you correct me if I'm wrong, that policy of restraint was designed to allow HMRI to flourish. Yes. So you didn't, in simple terms, you didn't want to be building lots and lots of houses mm. at the same time as trying to bring HMRI forward. So you wanted restraint. Yes. So that oh. HMRI had the right economic circumstances yes. which to to where is it? Greatest need, mm -hmm. i.e., Eastern World Settlement One, as presently set out in the Emerging Growth Strategy. Um, so, we feel it's a fundamental part of the issues we touched upon earlier, as in, say, the justification as to why inappropriate development at this location potentially can come forward because we feel that the undersupply that we highlight within our evidence can only be catered by releasing further sites. If there aren't any sites within the five year land supply within the urban area, then the logical conclusion is that greenfield sites must be released. Now, as the boundaries are drawn, that site in the Wirral, the only option on greenfield site is to explore the opportunity to release green belt land. This is a point that's acknowledged by the other Merseyside authorities who are and have already engaged in undertaking green belt reviews, most notably Sefton and Nosley and Bolton. Liverpool haven't, we don't really have any green belt. So all the neighbouring authorities are undertaking green belt reviews and we feel this is a strong material consideration in favour of the application. Is there anything that you want to you want to respond to the Oh, the phone over there, HMR. 
I think the biggest step out in Polymer clearly showed that in numerous years over the last decade there have been consistent deficit on the targeted number for delivery. Therefore, in the present circumstances, that is tantamount to the shortfall that we're identifying, i.e. that there is in the region, say, one from four years, which in, in the present date means that there isn't five years projection moving forward, therefore seven wellings should be released at site, and it does fall in very special circumstances to proceed, as we've highlighted by the other case for examples, to the contrary of the one the, the council presented in their evidence. Well, perhaps you can go on to that, um, but when you say seven times, you're subtracting three from the conversion, are you? Or yes. The, the, the site itself carries three consented units. So sorry to put into the No, no, you want to know me. Effectively, this proposal represents seven new dwellings. Okay. So, how then, um, Mr. Cockney, should one approach? Um, how, how should one approach the, the, the judgment in uh, the policy terms? Well, we, we're of the view that the RSS is the only um, information for you which has undergone examination as, and been found to be sound. We, we acknowledge the fact that it's been revoked, but as there is a policy vacuum at present in terms of adopted numbers, as the case law from the law of one more interim statements suggests, it's the logical fallback position, and on that fallback position, the stats show in Table A that there is only three point six years worth of supply. So the effect, the effect of that in terms of the framework is, is what? Um, our view is, is that in terms of footnote nine, touched on, um, should be taken in the context of foot, footnote ten, the subsequent footnote. Um, that there are material considerations that override um, nine, which says that the loss of green belt should be resisted. It does not say the green belt development should wholly be deemed unacceptable in all instances. It says it should be resisted, and then point ten says that less material considerations justify the loss. Okay, well, one of the things that best seems to do is to explain how I think it might be approached in, in each scenario. I think if, if one agrees with the council that they did have five years supply, I don't think you need to do very much with this because you would just deal with matters in terms of development plan. Um, you, you deal with um, development plan policy, you obviously take this into account, you can take into account in terms of way of approaching development in the green belt, um, sort of ways, you know, harm by reason of inappropriateness, any other harm, way of this back in benefits, then you come to the conclusion as to whether the benefits clearly outweigh the harm to the extent that very special circumstances were demonstrated and then you may have a correct plan condition. You might take the other view that the benefits don't clearly outweigh the harm in which case the answer would be no even though they um, uh, no even though that, that, that would be the way you do that. The more complicated it seems to me situation is um, where there isn't when you form the conclusion that there isn't because paragraph 49 says, relevant policies for the supply of housing should not be considered up to date if the local planning authority cannot demonstrate the primary supply of deliverable housing to that. Um, we, could, we could discuss whether a, a, green, a policy that designates green dot is a, a relevant policy for policy for the supply of housing. It seems to me it probably is. Um, because if you, um, if you dedicate or allocate the green belt housing supplement in that area is a general rule. And so it is a consumer supply housing. So but then you turn to you turn to paragraph 14 and it is a if I need to take a call to us, but for decision taking this means uh, where the development plan is absent side of the relevant policies are out of date, going back to what paragraph 49 says you grant permission unless and then there's the, the first one any adverse impact of doing so significant is not to be benefits when assessing the policies in the framework of the four, or the second one, specific policies in this framework indicate that housing should be restricted. So that takes you to foot, footnote nine, which says, for example, if policies related to sites, technical goods, habitat directives, etc., triple SI, and land designates as green. 
through the article for me. So what that seems to be saying to me is paragraph 49 is bringing 14, paragraph 14 is corporation, but then paragraph 9 is taking it out of corporation. So it seems to me what we have to do today is go back to how um, the approach is developing the green back here. So you need to balance on one side all the harmful impacts, um, if there are any, um, they would be harmed by reason of insulting as by definition or other On the other hand, you have to um, assess benefits, uh, the benefits in terms of providing housing, and I think, the, as I'm understanding it, including affordable